Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post another quick video here. Um, kind of on a roll of jumping on some of these contest videos, so I want to kind of keep that going and take this time to do a response to uh, Bill, the vinyl verse. Uh, he has a new contest video that's up, and I told him I was going to do a response, so I wanted to sit down and just kind of do it really quick before I got all settled in. So, uh, yeah, I believe it's 700 subs, I, I think. But, um, yeah, definitely want to kind of take a moment, Bill, just like I said, just to kind of jump in and, and pay my respects to your channel. So let me just kind of jump right into it so I don't take up a bunch of time uh, and make this like a 30, 40-minute video. Uh, question number one, so trying to read it across the way there, is how, oh, how did you discover the VC and when did you begin making videos? Playing a little Genesis in the background for you, too. Um, yeah, actually, I'm going to give you kind of an interesting answer to that question because not only am I going to tell you how did I discover the VC and when did I start making videos, but I think what I'm actually going to be able to do is tell you where and how the VC started. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit deeper than that. So I made my first video back in 2008. Okay, and the reason I made my video in the first place, and you can actually go back and watch it, and you'll hear me say this at the beginning of the video, was that I had just really kind of, I just started getting in the vinyl, and just really started collecting. And so I thought, hey, let me go to YouTube, and just kind of, I, I would love to see videos of people talking about vinyl and records and everything. And there was nobody. Like the only person that was making videos was a, a, a guy named Sean, I think, was it Sean 016 or something like that? But he was the only person making videos. And he was, you know, talking about music a bit. He, I think he did like a desert island where he showed his top five and, and that type of thing. But there weren't a lot of people, really anyone there that was making video responses and that type of thing. He was just, you know, just doing it. And so I saw his videos and there was one other guy that had maybe sh had shown a couple of picture discs that he had but he didn't have any other vinyl videos. So it was just like nothing from a vinyl perspective. So I made my first video in 2008, and in the beginning of that video, you actually hear me say, well, I came here to YouTube because I wanted to see other videos, and there really wasn't any, so I thought, well, heck, maybe I just need to at least make some myself and at least put something out there. So I did that for a number of videos, maybe eight, 10 videos. I kind of did some random things. I have to go back and look at the exact number. But somewhere in there, there was a guy by the name of Wasapamati was his username. Never made videos, had no idea who he was. But he asked me a question one time where he said, what were the five most influential albums that really kind of developed your overall musical taste of like all the stuff you love today? Like what five albums spawned all of that? And it was just kind of one of those, you know, mind blowing type of questions. And I spent about two or three days trying to come up with an answer. So, considering I like, you know, metal, hard rock, R&B, jazz, and everything like that, I was trying to find a piece that, you know, sprouted out into all of that. So, for the jazz side, I actually came up with Kenny G Live was the album that I picked that because that covered my love for all jazz because that was the first jazz album I ever liked. Um, so, I showed that, and then there was a guy by the name of Dan who lived in Canada, uh, Dan was you know, kind of a younger guy in his 20s. He was in a band, uh, kind of an al not alternative. He was more on the hipster side of things. But Dan was really, really cool and just knew all of just that weird music and bands that you would never hear about. But he, his knowledge was insane. I learned so much from that guy. But uh, he saw that video that I did, and he, he kind of got a good laugh about the Kenny G Live. And in the comment he made about how funny it was I showed that album, he said, I think, I think I'm, I'm going to do a video about my five most influential. And I was like, oh, cool, somebody else doing a video. That's great. And so then Dan did a response. And from that, I remember, you know, maybe 10 or 20 people that kind of jumped on board and started commenting back and forth, asking Dan and I different questions. And then a few of them started making videos they started making videos, and next thing you know, a couple of months into it, there's maybe 
a hundred people that are kind of in the the vinyl community at that point in time, and uh, and it really was just like that community because it was so small that we all knew each other. Like everybody knew everybody that was talking about vinyl. Then it grew a little bit bigger, and there were a few hundred more people, and then that's when we went through this period of time for maybe a year or so where the threads were just overwhelming. It was like impossible to keep up with every thread that everyone was throwing out there. Um, it was, you know, it was, it was ridiculous. And then from there, it just kept growing and growing, and now it's into the just a gigantic, international, ridiculous thing that it is today. So, uh, you know, I made my first video back in 2008, and when did I join the VC? I feel like I kind of joined it before it even became the VC. It was like, but I, I still honestly think that that video between Dan and I of the five is where I experienced the first sprouting and where the VC kind of came from overall, which has been a really cool thing to, to be around from that point and to see where it is now. Because it's, I mean, obviously, it's just ridiculous to go from, you know, literally 10 guys or so just kind of chatting together for a while to people traveling all over the country and you know packages going by each other in the air just all kinds of stuff it's just freaking awesome but uh anyway so that's my answer to to question number one uh question number two show show an album or two that you picked up from oh seeing in the vc or in vc videos and there's a ton of that stuff I mean, if there's one thing I love about the VC is how it constantly shows me I don't know jack about music. <laughs> I mean, there's there's just so much good music out there that you guys are introducing me to all the time. And I'm actually going to combine this with question number four because you asked to give a couple of shout outs to some VC members. So what I decided to do was just, I just went through my collection and like the first seven or eight I saw, I just went with those. So I'm gonna give a shout out to the people that, VC members that introduced me to these albums. I thought that'd be kind of a neat way to do it. So I'm gonna start out here with uh, Magma. I had never heard this album before and had never seen it before until I was watching uh, Derek, you know, Derek V. Matter of fact, I, when I went ahead and pulled out his own album here, this is Derek Three, but uh, he, he, he's introduced me to a ton of different things. Uh, Derek is definitely one of those guys that, um, I guess to sum it up kind of simple, you know, you don't find him floating around the mainstream as much. Like he's one of those guys that thinks Kiss is the absolute worst thing in the world. Uh, but just a lot of, not even experimental, but he, you know, he, he just, he hears, he hears sounds in unique ways and really kind of gets into very unique creative stuff. And so I, I, you know, Mag Magma here, uh, Hot Chip. I mean, there's, there's a number of different albums I've picked up uh, from his videos over the years. But that was definitely a big one. And like I said, this is one of his number of albums that he's actually put out. But I pulled this because it's my favorite, Derek 3. The only one I have by him is not signed, too. But there's, uh, there's D-Man right there. And I pulled this one because it's my favorite album because it probably has my absolute favorite song by him, which is Morning I Rise. I think it's just, just an absolute beautiful piece. Matter of fact, I love it so much and I've always felt it's a compliment when I say it. He may not like it, but I feel like that's Morning I Rise is a missing track off of Dire Straits' Brothers in Arms. Like, Dire Straits wrote that and lost it and Derek found it and put it on his own album. It's fantastic piece so uh next person i will i guess give a shout out to based on albums that i've been introduced to would be uh diana digging in the crate uh it's her username i think she's from germany but um again when you watch her videos her knowledge when it comes to just introducing you to jazz and fusion and all that type of just really cool stuff and she just grabs that stuff all the time. And I watch her videos, like literally just having to take notes of all the crap that I have to go get after she she introduces me to it. And these were actually three that just popped up just like that. Most recently, just about a, a month or two ago, she introduced me to uh, Muriel Grossman. 
and as literally probably one of the best jazz albums I've bought in I don't know how many years. Definitely the best new jazz artist that I've discovered in the past five, ten years, literally. Love her to death. And so she introduced me to to her, and this is Reverence. Uh, I've, I've showed this on a recent video where I kind of talked about it, and I jokingly, but you know, I'm being serious too, when I say this is an album that can kind of make you believe in reincarnation because to some degree John Coltrane came back as a white woman I mean because she 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 has some she has a bit of Coltrane soul in her for sure and just a fantastic album she totally introduced me to that and there was another album that was issued I think in 2018 or something like that uh Golden Rule which you know, only had like 500 copies sold out quick. They go for like 140, 150 dollars now. And I was just asking Diana, so I was just, do you, do you, anyway, you can get one of those. I want one so bad. But, and she said, well, I heard there's a new reissue they're going to be doing on that in 2020. And I was like, oh, okay, well, it's beginning of 2020 now, so that's good. And sure as heck, they reissued it. I That had me looking. And they reissued it just a few weeks ago. And I got a copy, like 30-something bucks, and it's on the way, too. So, Muriel, Gross, Muriel Grossman, awesome artist I've been introduced to through the VC, and Diana, who I'm going to give a shout-out to. Uh, she also introduced me to this album, Neighborhood Children, just kind of some good psych, some good psych stuff. And then she also introduced me, and again, just recently, maybe two or three months ago, to uh, this one here, a song for Paul, which is Ghost Funk Orchestra. Again, just kind of some more cool psych stuff. So, yeah, watching her videos can get expensive because, man, she, that girl's got taste. Her taste in music is freaking awesome. Uh, next here, I'm going to give a shout out to Seco Funk. Uh, again, because it's just a huge album. I remember him introducing me to years ago. This might have been five years ago, something like that. Um, but it's this album right here, which is Miguel, Kaleidoscope Dream. I've mentioned this album a few times in the past, but the thing that's so magical about this is most of you that kind of know me know that I'm not very big on modern day R&B and modern day hip hop. There can be some very, 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 very <laughs> specific things that I like, but in general, Modern day hip hop and modern day R and B just I could totally do without. Now you take me mid nineties and start going back. Oh yeah, going to the eighties. Oh, I mean R and B and hip hop from the eighties is just magical. But he showed this album one time and was talking about it, and you know just really talked it up. And I was like, okay, I guess I got to go check that out. And man, this album literally just saved my belief that a modern day awesome simple back to the point type of R&B album can be made that's just a little more I don't know it's even hard to describe but this album is slamming <laughs> without quite this album is bad love it to death so yeah Seco Funk gotta give a shout out to him I don't think he's done a video in kind of like a few years now or something but he introduced me to that album. Have to give him a shout out for that. Uh, the next one is going to be Billy Hurst. Everybody, you know my boy Billy. And he, actually, maybe say he and his wife, uh, they introduced me to Chris Stapleton. So I had, I had never really listened to his stuff, heard of him, or just kind of really knew anything about him. I'd seen this album before, but had never given him a listen at all until Billy Hurst threw this in my ear one night when we were doing having a listening party and so yeah he it just introduced me to a, a I mean, just a fantastic freaking album obviously I'm sure you guys knew about this long before I did but just you know really really great fantastic album in the sense that it, it combines two things that I think it are two of the most pure elements of music and that is when you go back to Motown type of tracks just just the pure nature of what Motown was and you combine that 
with a delivery of southern country delivery, it, it, like vocal delivery. Like in, in my mind, those two things are so pure in in the world of music that it it just always produces just gigantic emotions. I guess that's just kind of the best way to put it. And that's really what Chris Stapleton is doing on this album. You know, I've, I've talked to a bunch of different people about it over the, like, you know, what makes it so great, what makes it so this and, and I'm like, dude, all he's doing is singing Motown songs with a country twang. Like, that that's what it is. It's Motown saying country. And, uh, and I was like, that's a powerful one-two combination, boy. And he does it to perfection. So yeah, uh, give a shout out there to Billy Hurst, and that's the album that I was introduced to by, by Billy here in the VC. And with everything I just mentioned about Dan in Canada, you know, uh, and all the stuff he introduced me to, and he stopped making videos probably six, seven years ago, a long time ago. Uh, I guess he got really busy with his band and stuff like that, and he just kind of, kind of stopped. But I, I just had to pull out at least one of the things that he introduced me to early on. And this became one of my favorite modern bands here, which is Wild Nothing. And this is their debut album, Gemini. Um, now, the cool thing about Wild Nothing, and you guys have probably heard me mention this group a couple of times. If you are a synth pop fan and you love the feel and sound and just kind of flow of that 80s synth, you will love this album because... While Nothing is basically a modern day 80s synth band. And I definitely think this is their best album. I think it came out in 2010 or something like that. So fantastic album. And I learned about this through the VC from, from Dan, who I'll give a shout out to. I would love to catch up with him and see what he's, what he's up to now. And the very last one here, and I can't really say this album, but I was introduced to this group by a VC member. And she's really no longer doing videos either, but uh, it's the Metal Goddess. I think she's is she over in Sweden. I can't I can't remember where she's at right now, or where where she, where she is. But uh, she doesn't do videos as much anymore. But she was the one that introduced me to Arch Enemy. Uh, I I never really listened to them or had heard anything about them or anything of that nature. And she actually sent me a CD one time, and it was the one that had the cover of um, the cover they did of the Oath from Kiss, and it was just one of those things that just kind of blew my mind, and like boom, Arch Enemy became something that I really loved. So she was the one that had introduced me to this album here. All right, so that's kind of a way of doing my sh my shout outs as well as showing you some albums I was introduced to through the VC. So I think I need to skip back one question, which was show your favorite album in your collection. And you guys are gonna get tired of seeing this one because it is. I keep having to pull it off the freaking wall to show it in, in these videos. But uh, this is definitely my favorite album in my collection. Um, and I'm talking about this from a standpoint of value, of music, of just, you know, like all the different elements that come into play with us as collectors. This is definitely has to be my favorite because it is one of the most valuable albums in my collection. I mean, it typically sells for about 250 or 275 without a signature. Um, I think I bought it for like 24.99 when it first came out. Um, it, on top of that, it's one of my favorite albums because it's my favorite band, which is Godsmack, of course. But it's kind of a tie between this and Awake are my, you know, my two favorite albums with Godsmack. So, again, I could say my favorite album, one of my favorite albums, my favorite band. It's autographed. You know, it's just, yeah, it's definitely probably my favorite piece of my collection right there. Only thing that makes it not my favorite, and I bitch about this every time I talk about it, is the fact that it was a picture disc. For regular sleeve, which was nice. But the discs are actually picture discs, so I would it'd be cool if they were regular vinyl. At some point in time, I'm hoping they reissue. Actually, I don't even care if they reissue this. If they just get Awake and Faceless and Four, if I could just get those three albums on vinyl, oh my gosh, I'd be so happy. But anyway, that's kind of my favorite there. And the last question where you ask, what was your favorite um, uh, Genesis album and what was your favorite song? 
I don't know the answer to that, quite frankly, but I thought it may be fun just to kind of take a guess. <laughs> I thought that may be actually more fun than looking up, the, trying to actually find the, the answer for sure. So I'm going to take a stab at it and say your favorite Genesis album in the time period that you specified is Duke. All right. And the reason I picked this one, number one, is because you're such a gigantic Genesis fan. And this album somewhat is that crossover between the old stuff that Genesis was doing and kind of the 80s stuff that they were going into. So being as big of a fan as you are, I just kind of made an assumption that maybe that piece that really offers a little bit of both of those time frames might be your favorite. Just guessing. Now, favorite song? Hmm. I am going to go with, you know, considering, again, you being such a big Genesis fan, maybe the natural assumption is it's probably one of the deeper B-side cuts type of thing, like the Genesis songs that no one really knows about. But I'm going to go the opposite and make it one of the most obvious. So is it Turn It On Again? That's going to be my guess. Turn It On Again off of Duke. That answer is almost like so obvious that it it's either totally right or so far away from being right it's not even funny. But that's, that's what I'm going to guess. <laughs> so uh, anyway, there you go, man. Um, fun contest. Great questions. I had, had a good time talking about those. 20 minutes went by just like that. But um, yeah, so as always, let me know what you think. Great contest. Congratulations. And as always, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.